Hello and welcome. Today I'd like to share with you a technique to weave a supplemental warp using a rigid head of loom. I'd like to explain a little bit what is a supplemental warp. Well, if you're doing some plain weave tabby, that's going to be your base for your supplemental warp. And then what you can do is you can choose some yarn. Maybe you have some designer yarn. Maybe you have some art yarn. Maybe you just have some fun yarn that you'd like to add to your weaving. Rather than adding it later, we're going to do it as you're weaving and it's going to be in the warp. Let me do a little explanation as a little bit more. Maybe this might help also. So right now I have a piece of wool fabric that I wove. It's already been washed and tried. And what I did was I added a design to it. And what I do is I used a darning needle and some yarn. And what I literally did in this particular pattern is I took my needle and I went under two threads, over four, under two, over four, under two. And I came up with this pattern and I did it after I wove. Well, in this situation with the rigid head of loom, I'm gonna show you how you can do that at the same time. You don't have to do it later. And it's one thing you can do for some, maybe adding a little extra color, I only have a few colors on here. You can put as many yarn colors and different types of yarn in your supplemental warp as you would like. Now, I also suggest that you use a rigid head of loom with a fairy, maybe something with a six dent or eight dent, or maybe even a four dent and double some of your yarn in it. My demonstration is a little tight, so some of the yarn's a little sticky. So you'll see what can happen if you have some yarn that has some stickiness to it, or maybe a lot of little, um, maybe beads or something like that in it that you might like to add. So let's get started. Let's take a look at this weaving that's going on. I've already done some weaving. So this is what the results are. And like I said in the example of the hand uh, embroidery, I went under two, over four, under two, over four, and I got the effect. Well, here all of this yarn is in the warp. Now, since it's already all on the loom, I'll explain how the yarn got on there. First of all, the purple yarn was not part of the wind on. So when you're preparing your, your, your loom to weave, you don't even have to add any of this. So for example, I'm gonna kind of lift this up out of the way and you can see that if I pick all of this up, get the purple out of the way, basically the base yarn is this. And I did the, the threading, however you warp your loom, it doesn't matter, I have it into a slot and a whole slot, whole slot, whole. And I can just weave a tabby weave. So we can almost pretend this isn't here. But then what I did was I added my extra yarn. And I'm going to turn the loom around so you can see what I did and how you can do that. So I'm gonna gently, gently turn the loom around, all the way around. And Now we have the back of the loom, and on the back of the loom, we also have some of these clamps. Well, these are my weights, but I'm going to take one of these off and I want to do a little explanation. So as you can see, this is loose. Now the loom actually has a, um, I believe about a four yard, maybe, maybe it be a three yard warp, but what I did was the yarn that I'm using as a supplemental is an extra yard. So if you have three yards, you want at least four yards because what's going to happen is this is going to float over the top and it's not going to be as tight as the rest of the uh, rest of your weaving. What you can do is you can wind your warp on. I suggest maybe a solid color, something that can show off your color. And then and you can see these are in the slots and you can decide where you want your colors. I decided to use two shades of purple and I put place them in that order. And I also want a little spacing be between each one. So again, you can see it's already a little sticky. I decided where they were and then I threaded them through and I tied them on to the front beam just like you would with all the other yarn. So the cotton and the wool are all tied on, how, again, however you do that. And then you can go and find whatever you have for weights, I happen to have some of uh, these in the basement. Actually, you probably have, I don't know, 30 of these clamps in the basement because my spouse does a lot of woodworking and a lot of other things. So I, I take this, what I like about it, I can clamp it here, allow it to go down, and then as this slowly comes up, 
all I have to do is release this and make sure that it, I, I clamp it again. And you wanna make sure that your yarn is fairly spread out. So that's the setup, that's how you get started to weave your supplemental warp on your rigid head of loom. All right, I showed you the basic uh, what happens and how do you get these sticks in to make them work properly. You have to be very, very careful that you don't twist the yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stick that's going to go uh, on the bottom on first and then I'm going to do the top one. So what I'm literally doing is I'm going to the front and I'm going all the way and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down purple, I'm going to pull down another purple the darker purple, and I'm making sure they're to the right of, I have uh, these uh, threaded a certain way, to the right, so I go back and forth, and again, this is kind of the, the setup, kind of the tricky part to make sure that you have those exactly where you want them. And the next one, again, I'm gonna pull that purple one down. I'm gonna make sure that, looking in, I'm looking bird's eye, that it's not stuck on anything. I'm gonna pull the next one down. I'll put the stick up stick in in a minute. Then I go over to the next one, same thing. To the right, I'm being trying to be consistent. If you notice, all of these are in the slots. All the uh, supplemental warp are in the slot. So I bring the next one down. And now those are all on the bottom. And I'm going to take this pickup stick in there and I'm gonna slide it back. So that's out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the one for the top pickup stick. And what happens, I'm not gonna put it quite so, so far back. Now what I can do is I can kind of look in here and see where they are and make sure that this one is where I want it to be. And it's easy again to twist it. So you kind of look up on the front here, make sure that it's okay there, put this one in, do the same thing on the next one. I'm gonna go up to the front, kind of travel on up. This is what takes a little time. It's obviously a little bit faster using your floor loom, if you watch that demo. And I have this one here, I'm following, making sure it's not stuck. I am gonna take this one, pop it up, and make sure it's not stuck again. And then, oh, gotta get this one up here. You know, my arm might be in the way. I'll show you what's going on in a minute here. That one there. And we have one more. That we're going to pick up one thing when you have hand spun yarn that's loosely spun, if you do spinning, it's a little hairier. So now I have all of those up. So those will all go up and the other ones are going down when I need them. This is a technique if you do some tapestry weaving, you uh, sometimes use one pickup stick that you keep in all the time and the other one you change. That's what's gonna happen here. This one's gonna stay in, this one I'm going to change uh, as we go. So I'll turn the loom around and we will go to the next step. We're ready to do some weaving. And I am now, I was doing four up, two down. And so we have the up stick going on next. The tension, I believe it's tight enough. A little click on there. And again, what I wanna make sure right now, before I get started, yeah, those look like they're gonna be okay. They're gonna stay up. And I'm gonna start weaving. So I'm gonna go back and forth four times, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go down and go to that area. I'm going to weave it. Eight. Now I'm gonna go up. Now in this case, you might need to put your pickup stick on the end to make sure that it's really up on the top as far as it needs to be. Otherwise, those threads just might not be all the way up. I'm gonna come back down. You can continue to leave that pickup stick on the angle. You make sure that these are all raised. Go back the other way. And if it falls down, you can always pick it up 
Oh, I know, sorry, a little weaving joke going on there. All right, so that one's up. Again, I'm gonna make sure it stays up and out of the way. And now I will have had four threads that are on top. I'm gonna put this back in the rest position, but I have to take this out. All right, took the uh, top stick out, and now we're gonna do the bottom part. This I, sl I slide forward, and like I said, I have these little rubber bands up here to hold it down. So I'm gonna put that pickup stick there underneath, and then you wanna make sure that those really stay down because it can be a little sticky in there, and I can see some of those. So right now we wanna make sure they're down. I'm gonna push this all the way down. Looks like I have a nice clean shed. And like I said, I'm gonna go back and forth two times. So this is one. I'm gonna go up the other way. And we go beat forward. I'm gonna put this in the rest position. And what I do is I'm going to keep that pickup stick there. Now what I need to do is I need to go back and use my pickup stick again and pick up all those purple ones to go up. And that's the next. All right, I did this before. I'm going to make sure that the yarn is exactly where I want it. And I am going to pick up the purple. Go to the next one, pick up the next purple. And the next shade that I have I'll go in here and I'll, again, I'm making sure that I have, I'm picking them all up on the same side and I can go up in the front and see if I'm doing it correctly by following this. Now, right now I'm going to pick these up and I can see right now that these two, as I go up here, are twisted. So I need to redo those again. And what happens is you can kind of follow along going up to this, it might be hard to see in the camera. And this is what I was talking about. You want to make sure you get them on the right side. So in this case, I have that on the right side. And you're following, I'm following the pattern that I did. Once you get this down and you have kind of a pattern going on, you can keep it going. And it, it will usually automatically stay where you want it. Again, I'm going to follow this. Looks good. Let's see the next one. Bring that up. Let's see how that one's going. All right, it looks like it's, that's where I need it, right in there. And we have two more. Sometimes it might be better just to go from the front of the loom where you're weaving and pick up your yarn that way. And then it definitely gets out of the way. I can, as I'm doing this, I can actually hear the little, it's sticking together. So now I have all of those ready and I will continue weaving with the pattern. And we're going to continue on or making sure those all are up. I'm going to go down. Again, making sure they're up. There looks good. And this time again, I'm doing four. So I'm going back and forth four times. And those are still floating up. So that's good. That's the good news. Oh, that little guy wanted to, there we go. You can actually see it in your pattern if you made a mistake and if you have a twisted thread. So that's probably what can happen is twisted threads and they get twisted right back here. Fix them ahead of time. Going back up. Oh. I wound a little too much on my bobbin there. All right, back. Now I'm gonna put this in the rest position, take this one out, and I'm gonna move this one forward. Again, making sure that everything's sticking, staying down. Attach it to whatever you have on your loom that will work. And we're going to do two the other direction. And like I said, right now I can see they're a little stuck, so I'm gonna really push them down there.
and back into the rest position. And then, like I said, if we take this out, we can leave that up there so there's at least one part of the pickup pattern that we don't have to um, pick up. We can, actually, that one's pull down, right? The other one's pick up. So now we have our dash dash dot, what kind of look like the pattern. Again, you can decide any kind of yarn you'd like to use. Thanks for watching, and I hope that gives you another idea of something else you can do with your weaving on your rigid heddle loom.